Good afternoon, all. So like many of you who are caring for aging parents, I also spend some time every week with my brothers and my sister taking care of my mom, who turns 88 on Tuesday this week. And at those times when it's just so inconvenient or when I feel frustrated, I remind myself what a blessing it truly is to care for her. And I recall a refrain, uh, words that I heard her say so many times when I was a little boy. You have to understand, Mom and Dad had five boys in seven years. And then nine years later, my sister came along. So Mom would say to us five boys all the time, could I please just have a moment's peace? Maybe some of you parents can relate to that. But I, that, that refrain comes to me when I get frustrated at times with her. So the gift of peace is indeed what we receive, all of us, from Jesus in today's gospel and those wonderful words. My peace I give to you. My peace I leave you. Now we're familiar with those words because we hear them at every Mass. And so, first of all, it reminds us that the very words of the Mass, the words of the Eucharist, are all from Scripture, right? So, this gift of peace, and it it reminds us how central that gift is to our Christian lives, to our discipleship, because it is such an important part of the Eucharist. So much so that we wish that gift of peace to one another and exchange it with one another at every Mass. My peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. And then Jesus goes on and says, Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. So that begs the question, what kind of peace does the world give us? So that we can understand better and more deeply this gift of peace that Jesus gives us. So first we have to not confuse it with anything else, especially security. You know, we all seek security in many, many different ways for ourselves and our families. You know, we, we, we seek security in our employment and, you know, a, a solid retirement plan, um, insurance, living in a, in a decent neighborhood, I mean, um, security systems on our homes. You know, all those things that grant us security and safety, that's not the same as the peace Jesus gives. So what, what kind of peace can the world give us? I think the only peace the world can ever give is peace as the absence of conflict. And peace as the absence of conflict can only be given to us by the world when men and women are not behaving badly. And we don't see much evidence of that, whether it's between nations, between races, between political parties, or other ideological factions. But when men and women can behave well and respectful, then we can have the absence of conflict. That's the peace the world can give. What Jesus is describing in his gift of peace is something very different. And the best way that I have come to understand it is a verse from really a favorite hymn of mine. Um, Sometimes when I bring up a hymn in my homily, then uh, Scott is like, he's ready to play it right away for offertory. So the hymn is, How Can I Keep From Singing? And the verse is, um, No storm can shake my inmost soul when to that rock I'm clinging. So that idea of this deep inner sense of peace and well-being that can't shake anything that will confront us in our lives, in our relationships, in our realities. But that very presence of the gift of the Holy Spirit that Jesus promises to give us today is that gift of peace. Because, you know, as Christians, we're realistic. We don't expect an easy life. We don't expect a life without storms, without difficulties, without obstacles. Because we live the Paschal Mystery. That is the pattern of our life in discipleship in Christ. The same pattern that he followed. The dying and the rising, right? 
so that we, we walk through all of these storms with Jesus clinging to that rock with absolute trust and hope that we will never be shaken. No storm can shake us. That's the peace that Jesus wishes to give us. I think it can be approached in another way through that beautiful serenity prayer. As part of my daily prayer, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Right? So, um, sometimes we manufacture storms in our lives when we try to change and manipulate things around us or within us that we have no control over. So when the storms come, and they always will, and the difficulties and the frustrations and the challenges, who do we cling to? That's where we find this gift of peace that Jesus gives to us. That's the peace that we wish and pray for one another and exchange with one another at every Mass. The early church was not exempt from storms, and we we hear about one of them in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles today, that great question that arose about whether the Gentiles, who Paul was converting to the way of Jesus, um, had to first become good Jews in order to become followers of Jesus. Did they have to be circumcised and follow the Mosaic Law? And it was a huge storm in the early church. The two great super apostles, Peter and Paul, you know, were in that argument with each other. And, of course, Paul won because he was right that, no, they didn't. They didn't need unnecessary burdens placed on them. And so that also tells us something about the peace in our life together as Christians. Because religion is a tricky business. You know, we need religious practices and customs and traditions, each of us and all of us together, in order to grow in our faith, in our relationship with God, in our understanding of Jesus and his life within us and his calling for each of us. We need them. But if they become burdensome rather than life-giving, then that's the problem. Because they always have to point to God And if they don't point to God, they're burdens. But if they do, then love can bear fruit. So my prayer for each of us as we uh, celebrate this Memorial Day weekend and through this next week in our walk with Jesus is that we really encounter very deeply that gift of peace that Jesus offers. 